Hello everyone. My name is Ross. I've been working as a counsellor and coach since 2008. For all our progress in understanding and treating mental illness, it continues to be a subject of prejudice and stigmatisation. The reason for this may not be its strangeness, but its familiarity. Very few individuals or families are not touched by at least some aspects of mental illness. Anxiety is an adaptive response, a normal human experience. It is a natural emotion that occurs in response to threat. In fact, it can be potentially beneficial in response to dangerous situations and has throughout evolution played a critical role in our species survival. Anxiety is different from fear, but is a relation to it. Similarly, it triggers the nervous system to fight, flight or freeze. So what was an adaptive natural response has become maladaptive. Anxiety and, de and depression can be described as an emotional state which is marked by feelings of low self-worth or guilt and a reduced ability to enjoy life. Feeling down from time to time is a normal experience, but when emotions such as hopelessness and despair take hold and you just can't seem to get out the bit, you may have depression. More than just sadness in response to life's struggles and setbacks, depression changes how you think, feel and function. Depression has been called the black dog which carries feelings of impending doom, emptiness, angry, irritability and restlessness. However you experience depression, left untreated, it can become a serious health condition. It is important to remember that feelings of helplessness and hopelessness are symptoms of the depression, not of the reality of your situation. Since the onset of this COVID-19 pandemic, the media have reported on the devastation it is causing. Our social media feeds are full of death tolls, global economy recessions, the fear of unemployment, the lack of finance, and the pressures of homeschooling can be overwhelming. We are even being bombarded by conspiracy theories about 5G, global vaccinations, amongst many others. What then happens here is what's called social contagion, where we contract the anxiety of others. The pandemic that is causing mental contagion where it is possible to obsess about something until we become sick. We make ourselves sick about thinking about things we cannot control, which disable us from doing something about what we can control. It breeds fear and feelings of helplessness, which can lead to anxiety and depression. What we have to pay particular attention to is how much energy are we giving to negative situations? Is that causing you to ruminate and to go into obsessive thinking? I have never met you. You know better than anyone. You know yourself better than I could. Are you noticing anything that I have mentioned? Have your sleeping patterns changed? Are you more irritable than normal? Are you eating, drinking or smoking more than normal? Do you find yourself using behaviours to numb out and escape from your current situation? If you are, these could be early signs that you are on a path to what could lead to becoming anxious or depressed. If you've been diagnosed with anxiety or depression previously, the pandemic can cause stress and anxiety because it's disrupting normal life. When I say normal, I mean an equilibrium of safety you may have developed to manage your mindset in the past, such as mutual aid meetings, group therapy sessions, gyms and social clubs. Their closure has forced many to feel isolated. Look at this as an adventure to change. We can still utilise what helped us in the past, only not in its same form. We are being asked to adapt to a new way of managing our mental health. It is natural to return to our default setting of helplessness, but with the correct support we can once more gain control over our situation. 
Change is difficult for many, but becoming rigid in our thinking can cause more harm. A degree of flexible thinking can be hugely beneficial. Many of us wait until our condition becomes chronic and inescapable. The denial to our mental state, thinking it will pass or the shame that we have around talking about it, is only going to exacerbate it and exacerbate the negative feelings. As soon as you sense negative feelings chapping at your door, this is a cue to answer the call. Not to sit frozen waiting for the chat to stop. It will only get louder and make us hide more. Be inquisitive. What small things can you change? Introduce exercise, perhaps changing what we're eating or reducing or eliminating the consumption of alcohol. Limiting what we watch on TV or scrolling aimlessly through social media comparing our lives to others on Facebook. These changes are within our control. The journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. That step may be a medical intervention, group support, or connecting with an organisation that specialises in mental health. As John Lennon said, there are only so many chords you can play on a guitar that eventually you will copy someone else's work, and mental health is similar. Mental illness is one of the major health challenges we face in the United Kingdom. It is estimated that more than one in three people are affected by mental health each year meaning someone has strung a chord that may resonate with you. You are not alone in this challenge, and I encourage you to take the first step towards recovering a more balanced mindset. Thank you.